By the way, um, when you read the book of Genesis um, at the creation of the world, there is something that I'd like you to pay attention to. Um, God did things. He didn't set time. He would do things. When he was done doing things, then that was called a day. So he didn't create 24 hours and then try to fill things into 24 hours. He did things. When he was done doing his things, he called that a day. The measure of life is not how many years you lived, it's what did you accomplish in it. You could live 50 years in time, but you may have only lived two months in purpose. So the key is not to strive for many years, it's to fill them with things. It's, 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 it's quite unnecessary to live around for 70 years and accomplish nothing, okay? So I, 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 I would advise that you stop stressing about how long you will live and start worrying about the kind of things you are filling your life with. Um, because that is what God teaches us. That what matters is what fills the time, not the length of the time. Are we still together? Um, some, 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 some people make it challenging to bury them as a pastor. Uh, because sometimes the family expects you to say a few kind words about the deceased and you honestly have nothing to say other than that they were born and at some point you came across them now you've been informed they are dead make it easy for the saints not to lie in your funeral <laughs> fill your time with purpose this way we won't search for things. I was still together. Um, and, 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 and so that is why I started by saying it is my prayer that you had at least a purposeful day, a meaningful day or a day that you could manage. If you didn't, I would challenge you to start filling up your days with meaning. Don't worry about the hours. Don't worry about the hours, okay? A whole week in time could be equal to one day in purposeful work. Just make sure that you, you do things, you finish up things, you reflect on things, and it's meaningful, the things that you were um, part of. There was a, a, a famous South African musician um, who died quite some time ago. Um, he, he used to sing with uh, three ladies. Um, his name was uh, Uma Shatini, and he sang with three ladies called the Ama Odela Queens. Um, if you don't know them, it says your age. If you know them, it says something about your age also. I know them, so that puts me in a particular category. Um, he, he went to the UK at, in, in 1982. He went to the UK for a concert, for a tour. At that time, South Africa, of course, was under apartheid and there was big international pressure for this uh, segregation system to come to an end. So black South African musicians were getting the attention from the international community to come and sing and do tours in Europe. By so doing, they would also get to share the stories of what is happening in this uh, a closed up space called SA, so that it would galvanize governments and activists and private sector to join in, in that space. So he, he left, he went to the UK for a tour. When he came back, he, he was interviewed on what was then known as a Radio Zulu. Today they call it Ukozi FM. Now there was a guy on Radio Zulu back then um, who was a, a host. His name was Upo Loza Wawanzimand. Now he's a senior, senior man at the SAPC, um, one of the, the top uh, uh, senior managers. So he, he interviews him and says to him, so um, tell us, how was it in London? You, you were in the land of the Queen. Uh, how was it? And Mashatini says, uh, we arrived. We ate. We slept. 
And the following day, we woke up, we ate, we ate, we slept. And for a good two minutes, that is what he said until Portrosa had to change the line of questions because he could clearly pick up that nothing was going to change. See, I think that is the challenge with most of us. That is exactly the story of our lives. We wake up, we eat, eat again, sleep. And this includes people who go to work. Going to work doesn't make you a meaningful person. Let me put it to you this way. God gave you a job to put food on your, on your table, but your job is not your purpose. He gave you a job to put food on your table so that as you fulfill your purpose, your table is not harmed. So waking up, getting into the car, driving to it, that's not purposeful. That is what all human beings must do in order for food to be on the table. <laughs> purpose has to do with those things that you do, knowing very well that no one will thank you, but you do them for their greater good and for their joy, regardless of the response of the world to you doing those things. So don't confuse the two. <laughs> for your job, you get paid. That's not purposeful. Even being a pastor, being a pastor is not your purpose. Every pastor must find his purpose within the ministry. We get paid to be pastors, but our purpose is that thing we do and do with love, such that even when the conference doesn't reimburse me, I still do it because it is bigger than what I can report. It defines who I am, not what my employer expects. Let me leave you. Okay. All I was just saying is, can you please be purposeful? Thank you. Um, please be. Please be purposeful. I think this came up in my mind now because we are doing a youth work of prayer and I worry, especially when I talk to young people, but we'll address all of this again later on in the context of the second coming of Jesus Christ. Young people are living purposeless lives in a very painful way. You date someone for four years, you both know you've got no direction. Four years, four, four full years of kissing somebody who has no feature in your eternity. Four, four, that you will never regain. You've been hugging some idiot for no reason. For four years, four, and this thing is going nowhere. Four years. Soon you will be dying and you will regret those four years. Wasted time. Money wasted. Do you know how expensive dating is? <laughs> dating is expensive. Those of us who are now married, my friends and I who are, who are married, we once sat down and we decided to go through the amount of money we think we have spent in our previous relationships. And here we were only really trying to deal with significant things, like trying to recall birthdays of ex-girlfriends, significant dates and things like that. Never mind the in-betweens that you can no longer remember. As we were all sharing the numbers, we were all tipping at over 400, 500,000 rands spent in relationships of some, when you meet those people in camp meeting, you can't even remember their surname. But they used to be the love of your life. You look at the person coming your way and you think, I know, I know you. And I know you used to be important to me. But who are you? And you think of, oh God, help me remember, help me remember. I know they used to meet. I, oh, ah, ah. <laughs> After 
after wasting so many resources. So, hence I'm saying be purposeful in everything that you do. Be purposeful. Okay? There's nothing wrong. Look, do not be apologetic about your time. Never do that. If a guy comes and asks you out and you're a young woman, please never be a sucker for love at the expense of your time. Ask a guy, what's your plan? For when? How long? With what? By who? Do you have a plan? You don't. I'm sorry. If he says to you, you are putting pressure for me to get married, the fact that you think it's pressure means you have no direction. The minute the word marriage equals pressure to you, then I'm okay not dating you. These are years I will regret. Be purposeful. Be what? Purposeful.